Hey everyone. Uh, I think we will. I think we'll get started. Uh, thank you very much for. Thank you very much for being here with us today. Uh, really, really appreciate you getting out for, for 10 a.m. Uh, my name is Minori Ravindran, and I'm editor of TVI Magazine, uh, formerly Broadcast and Real Screen. Um, and we have a really fantastic panel here with us for Renaissance of the Nations and Regions. So, so thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, I will quickly sort of run down um, everyone on the panel, uh, and then we'll sort of go to everybody individually who will uh, show, the, show uh, some of the materials that they brought with them and, and get into a little bit more of their remit. Um, and then we'll have a wider discussion and obviously put it to the, the floor as well for, for questions. So we'll have about 15 minutes at the end. So get your questions ready if you, if you do have them. Um, so very, very pleased to have Fatima Saleri here with us to, to kick things off, uh, who's head of Specialist Factual for Channel 4 and made the move over from the BBC uh, just four months ago, actually. So very new in the role. Thank you very much for being here. Um, and we also have Rachel Dramante, who is company director of Drummer TV, which is based out of Bristol. We have uh, Anna Hull here, who is the creative director for True Vision Yorkshire, uh, which you founded in 2013. Mark Downing, creative director for IWC Media, which is part of Banerjee Group. Uh, and Ashley O'Connor, who is, again, we're very fortunate. This is sort of your first, I guess, I'm outing not even in the, the job role. yet. Not even in the <laughs> job yet. Um, so you're head of TV commissioning for BBC England, yeah. uh, which, and we're excited to hear all the ways in which you're going to shake up that role. Um, Fatima, I will start with you in terms of, well, actually, I suppose we have some, uh, some show reels first, don't we? So do you guys want to want to do those first, and then we'll, and then we'll, so Rachel, shall we start with you? Okay. So should I just say, so I'm Rachel from Drama TV. We set up Drama, I set up Drama TV um, seven years ago with Thames and Summers, my business partner. And we're an indie based in Bristol. We specialise in factual programming. We do a lot of um, programming for CBBC, so kind of children. We've done BBC Three and kind of BBC One, Channel Four, Channel Five, so kind of across the range of factual programmes. And also this last year, we've started doing a lot of work for British Sign Language Broadcasting Trust. We're also doing deaf programming. So I've got a sort of tiny little, it's not even really as grand as a show wheel, but just a couple of clips. <coughs> some things. So uh, my name's Anna Hall. I um, am a documentary director. I've lived in Leeds for 27 years and um, I'm uh, one of those people who decided not to move to London. Um, and I guess over the last uh, 20 years I've made lots and lots of very very difficult films but I've chosen to stay in the north and um, in the last few years I've set up a sister company to a company called True Vision in London so I now run True Vision Yorkshire which is based in Leeds and I think we've got a very short little showreel to show you. Uh, so I'm Mark Downey, I'm creative director of IWC, um, we are based in Glasgow, we're the biggest Indian in Scotland, um, I've been doing this job for about nine months now, um, uh, working back in Glasgow, having spent 25 years away working in London, but it now feels like a time of real opportunity in the nations and regions, and we're unusual as an indie in that we do a really wide range uh, of contents, so we've got Britain's Most Historic Towns, which is playing on Channel 4 on Saturday nights at, at the moment. We've got Location, Location, Location for Channel 4, but we also do drama documentary, arts and science. So there's a really broad range, um, and we'll show you some of that now. Um, all right, so I thought we would get started by, um, obviously, Fatima has joined us here from Channel 4. Uh, as you said, Mark, it's an incredible uh, time of change right now, so being led by this uh, immense extensive uh, relocation for the channel. Um, Fatima, can you update us a little bit in terms yeah. of where, where things are? And uh, so we've got obviously the headquarters in Leeds and creative hubs in Bristol and Glasgow. So yeah. So you know the structure we, we announced in March that we were going to have hubs in Glasgow, uh, Bristol and Leeds. Um, we're in the process, we've advertised jobs um, for all of those, uh, for two of those areas, Leeds and um, Bristol. Um, in terms of in terms of what we want to do, 
um, in those areas, one of the key things for us is making sure that the commissioners um, that are going to, so I'm going to obviously speak for factual and I'm going to try and relate everything back to commissioning in terms of what we're doing. So in terms of factual, we are going to advertise, we've advertised already for Leeds and Bristol. We want commissioners who are based there, we want commissioners who are from that community and we want people um, who share that passion for us in terms of bringing those stories um, from those worlds and kind of building and nurturing talent. Um, I mean, that's like one of the one of the key things um, that we want to do there. In terms of um, people who've already moved from Channel Four, there. In terms of the departments, you all kind of know that you've already got Caroline Hollick in um, Leeds, who's had a drama. Um, daytime are going to be moving up there. Head of Sport is already up there. I think the key for me is that it, it shows a massive commitment. Um, from the channel side and what's so exciting for me and Danny Horan um, who's head of factual is that we're going to be working with indies we're going to be working with new talent we're kind of trying to really encourage a cultural shift um, from London to really important places across the UK um, we want to try through the appointments that we make um, in factual to try and super serve indies who might find it harder um, you know for me in, in particular I, I hate this idea of people having to come to London having to come to this kind of um, this this kind of you know hallowed turf where where all the broadcasters are and what I'm really looking forward to is is developing talent and developing commissioners over there who you guys can kind of they can actually come to you you can come to them so there's a there feels like a proper organic conversation happening um which isn't just coming from london so the ambition for us is that we begin to start to build on that and you yourself will be will be sort of traveling around i will be traveling right? around lots um i traveled around lots when i was um the comed uh, religion one of my biggest bases was salford and glasgow um it's something that i look forward to I was born in the north, it's a place I know really well, um, I've got a huge affinity to it, um, you know, just, to me it's a really brilliant, exciting opportunity to kind of shift the dial on the way people um, think about ideas, but the way people think about staffing up um, their own company, so what we want to do is, um, we're really mindful of the fact that, you know, you've got fantastic indies already from there, and um, we're mindful of the fact that you know, we want to try and work with those indies to help us build a bigger and broader base. Brilliant. I mean, it's it's quite, it's interesting, but there was a report, I guess, that came out over the weekend uh, about Channel 4. Uh, apparently 90% of, I mean, if correct, if, if this is true, 90% uh, of staff would rather take redundancy packages and ultimately, you know, uh, move base, which is quite an astonishing figure. Um, does this obviously mean that there's more opportunities now to actually hire, as you said, local local commissioners and build? Yeah, there's massive opportunities for us to hire up there, and I think that that is a key requirement of what we want to do, is that what I don't want, what, you know, we don't want to do is have people thinking that, you know, people are going to be travelling up from London and they're just going to be placed in these um, in these hubs. We don't want to do that. We want to, we know that there is fantastic talent in Bristol. We know there is fantastic talent in Glasgow and Leeds. There are people there who can do these jobs. Um, there are people there that we can support through the Alpha Fund. There are people there that we can support through the Indie Fund. To me, it's a fantastic pipeline that it's not just established talent there. This is a brilliant, brilliant opportunity for us to think about who are going to be the next generation of commissioners. Who's going to be the next head of specialist factual in five years' time that's going to be, you know, coming from Leeds, that's going to be coming from Bristol. You know, we've got to we've got to try and use this as a fantastic opportunity to say to talent and to say to young people out there, we are here. We are wanting to encourage you. We want to kind of do all of this kind of stuff. It's not just going to be lifting people from London and placing them in those things. That is not what we are about. Mm. We'll talk about lift and shift as well a little bit later on. But um, Ashleen, I was wondering, you know, this is a perfect opportunity, obviously, for you to sure. sort of, your re uh, I guess, <coughs> describe your remit a little bit. I know yeah. that you're planning to really sort of shake things up from the from the previous... Uh, Grenade. Uh, yeah. There you go, exactly. <laughs> where it was a bit more news-focused, and now you want yeah. you know, to broaden that out. Can you tell us a little bit about um, that? Yeah, so hi, everyone. I'm, I'm Ashley O'Connor. Um, I'm not in post yet until August the 19th, so this is... It's quite difficult for me to be very specific. I'm going to have to be quite sort of broad brush strokes about what I'm intending to try and do. But um, essentially, BBC England is being kind of reinvented. Um, you're probably aware of that. Um, Helen Thomas, um, who's now running England, is, is trying to create a completely new offer for England audiences. Um, and that will be sort of rolling over the next um, couple of years. So 
I've been brought in to um, transform the television offer. So um, initially I'm going to be taking over 11 officers and about 100 staff who are internal in the BBC and who, who make current affairs content, but my but also taking over money that we've got for indies and looking at what we're doing there. And my remit is essentially to grow a slate of content which is um, which is multi-genre. Um, I've got a pretty... Um, I've been given quite scope to do essentially um, what I want within um, the parameters of what Helen will be happy with and Ken, who runs Nations and Regions, obviously. But essentially, my job is to build partnerships with, um, I'm hoping, um, I know Fiona Campbell really well, so partnerships with BBC Three. BBC Three are looking to work with the nations and grow um, uh, grow content for um, young people, so I'm hoping to feed into that. I'm hoping to grow um, content for other bits of the network, maybe daytime, BBC Four. Um, and so really I'm, I'm keen to grow a completely new slate, new and exciting, edgy, diverse and local slate of content as well as um, looking at the current affairs content that we make and also <coughs> revamping that to a certain extent. So that's the, that's the brief. And you've spoken a little bit about how there is, um, you know, for example, how is rural England being, being served? You know, what is the programming that is uh, catering to, towards that, uh, you know, those, those areas? What are you, what do, you do you have well, any I mean, really, at the moment, we're only making current affairs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've got 11 offices making Inside Out, essentially. Um, so, and Inside Out's a great investigative program, um, but I think there's room to give England audiences... Um, lots of other content. I think BBC Scotland, they've obviously got their own channel, but I think they're making fantastic um, short form arts and music. Um, I'd really like to do some arts and music. I think what really, um, I live in Hastings, so um, I'm from Dublin originally, but I've lived in the UK for 30 years, and um, my kids have grown up in Hastings, gone to state school in Hastings, and what's really struck me about living there um, is that when people come there to make programs, they make programs about drugs and benefits. Um, and my kids went out recently to a drum and bass night, and my daughter DJs drum and bass, and they were really excited. They said, oh, you know, there's somebody here, and they're making a program about drum and bass, and we think we're going to be interviewed. And then they came home, and I said, how did that go? And they said they weren't making a program about drum and bass, they were making a program about drugs. So I said, well, I hope you didn't get interviewed. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they said, oh, one of our friends did a line of coke on camera. you know." And I said, "That's really that, and that really annoys me. You know, I just think, go to these places and make, you know, I'm, I'm kind of quite tired of looking at... Um, uh, poverty porn programming, and I know it's been said before, but I really strongly um, feel strongly about it. And there's lots to celebrate in England, um, you know, the land of Shakespeare. There's lots to say in in the north, there's lots to say in the northeast, there's lots to say in Plymouth, in Hull, in Newcastle that is not, you know, drugs and, and crime. So that's what I want to do is create kind of celebratory, heartwarming content that makes people feel something but also feel good about themselves. Mm. And Mark, you can really sort of speak to that diversity program because it's it's apparent in your slate, isn't it? I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I sort of thinking of the terminology, sort of regions. Even that term is a very kind of London-centric thing. You know, we're not the regions; we're the fifty-seven million people who live outside the M25, <laughs> um, uh, and uh, that there is, you know, Britain has gone through. Uh, a series of very significant cultural changes in recent years. You've had devolution of power politically to Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. You know, over the last 10 years, you've seen devolution of power to Britain's cities. You know, and so finally cities, you know, have a voice through having mayors and are on the national stage uh, having a stronger and clearer identity. Um, but television has come quite late to the party. Um, you know, all of the channels, with the exception of S4C and the new BBC Scotland channel, are concentrated in London. And I think as a result of that, all of the culture that you're seeing pumped out by those channels has been refracted through the very particular prism of people living and working in London. Um, and that means that Britain isn't representing itself accurately back to itself. What do you think the greatest challenges are for a uh, channel like Channel 4 and, and sort of this, this relocation strategy in the various hubs? I think this is it's such a good thing that Channel 4 are doing this. I think at a stroke, it will end the incredibly piecemeal relationships that 
commissioning it, it, that the um, programme makers who live and work in the nations and regions have had with Channel 4 and all the other broadcasters. It means that Channel 4's connectivity with all of those people will be so much better because they have feet on the ground in a range of cities across the UK, not just London. Um, and that means that they will get to know the production companies better, they'll get to know the production talent better. One of the things that's quite tricky if you're a nations and regions indie is, you know, when you do get a commission, often, for understandable reasons, commissioning editors who have lived and worked all of their life, and I was one of them myself, who have lived and work, worked in London most of their life, um, the people that you want to put in a programme are some of the people that you've worked with yourself and know yourself. And actually, there are brilliant people in Manchester and Leeds and Glasgow and Cardiff. But if you're a commissioning editor who's been based in London all of your life, you just don't know those people. And it's hard to take that leap of faith and trust that those people are going to do a good job for you. If that commissioner is now based in Glasgow or Cardiff or Leeds, um, they will know those people and have a relationship with them. And so the channel is empowered to take decisions that will diversify their output. Mm. Do you think the skill shortage that people talk about in the nations and regions is really as as uh, extensive as perhaps it's made out to be? I mean, I know that... I think it, I think it's exaggerated. I think, you know, I think it comes from a position... So having been a commissioning editor myself, you're quite often, you know, anxious, you know, about the decisions that you make. You're literally... Somebody's come into the room, pitch you an idea and uh, you're about to hand them a million quid to make that series for you and you're hoping that it goes really, really well. And one of the ways that you can reassure yourself is by sort of putting people on it that you can trust. There are great people out there and Channel 4 will get to know them better, but all of the regions at the moment are investing very heavily in training so that that talent pool, which is there, can become deeper and wider. Um, and it's one of the things that's really striking. If you look at CVs in Glasgow, where we're making programmes, loads of people have been brought on by the production companies that they're working for out of a desire to nurture and hold on to that talent because the risk is that they do go down to London. So actually, we make the effort to make sure that it's worth uh, you know, our talents while staying in the city and we will invest in them to help them sort of rise up the ladder. Mm. Anna, could you speak to those? I well, mean, I, I think that... It's a really interesting time, and I think that there is such a challenge for commissioning editors to really do what they say they're going to do. Because it is, you know, as Mark said, it's easy to say, right, well, we'll take a London company and we will lift and shift. And um, I think in Leeds and in the Leeds wider region, there is an anxiety that, you know, is that just what's going to happen? Because, you know, so for me, for commissioning editors, I think, you, you know, they really have to go, OK, here's a company in, you know, Hull or Bristol or wherever. We are really going to nurture that talent with that, that indigenous production company. And I think that, you know, that, that it may take a little bit longer. So, I mean, I'm not in Mark's position. I haven't got tonnes of series coming out of my, my production company. But would I like to? Of course. And so, you know, for us, it, that's, it's about really saying, OK, we are going to take the time to develop and nurture what you have got there. Because I agree with Mark, you know, for me, I'm interested, you know, and that's always been my passion and my vision, is to say, right, you know, for me as a, as a director, eventually I got to a point in my career where I realised that there were no companies in that area that I actually really wanted to work with. And there was no, there was no, there were no companies of the sort of the caliber that I was looking for, with the execs that I was looking for. Mm. And I think that so therefore I did have, I had to go to London. I didn't move to London, but I had to go to London to look for that. And what I'm trying to do in the Leeds area is to say, right, if you're a brilliant filmmaker, I want to nurture you, and I want you to stay because mm. that's the issue. Because you invest in people, and you know, I so I want to create a a, a really sustainable team. So that you know, we've got editors, we've got producers, we've got directors who are who are all actually living and working in that area. But in order for me to do that, I have to create sustainability in my company. So therefore, I have to go from where I am, which is I've got you know one or two series, to be able to get something which is returning, which then creates that level of sustainability. So, I, you know, as a as a director of a company, I know exactly you know where I am. I know exactly what I've got to do. But we need, you know, companies like ours, we really need the commissioners to actually put their money where their mouth is and actually come and really invest in us. Yeah, and I think also within, I mean, because we're also a small indie and we haven't got loads of returning series, 
but I think kind of within the hub of Bristol, you know, there's a kind of been a quite a few indies have set up recently also doing factual programming. So even though it's not just drummer, it's like, you know, when you add together the three or four or five kind of others and then others are coming down and then people begin to see really good factual programmes coming out of, of Bristol. So then people kind of move to Bristol and it just builds the kind of the whole yeah. economy. And I think um, going back to the kind of the thing of the lift and shift, that actually can be the most damaging for the, for the kind of local indies because you get a big production that will come down and edit in Wales so that they can tick a regional box and suddenly all the editors from Bristol yeah. are kind of scooped out over the bridge, driving in there and back every day, doing nothing for the local economy, mm. except for ticking that kind of Channel 4 or BBC or whoever box mm. that is based in Wales, and we're suddenly left without all of our regular editors and that can be really kind of problematic because then, mm. you know, our kind of talent pool that we've grown and nurtured is suddenly gone. And then, you know, six months later, they're all back in desperate for work and we've kind of moved on and and nurtured new people, so sure. Are, are, there, are there safe, some safeguards in place uh, to, to prevent to prevent uh, lift and um, shift going forward? Yes, yeah, so we're in massive consultation with all of the indies and all of those in all of the areas and all the hubs that we want to kind of develop and build in. And I think that we, you know, our attitude is that we've got to kind of keep this consultation going. We've got to kind of keep talking to indies like Anna and Mark and Rachel, and we've got to kind of listen to actually what they're saying and try and come up together. With um, with solutions to this, because ultimately what we want to do is if this you know isn't just a flash in the pan. It's kind of sustainable growth that you want to do. It's exactly what Rachel said about putting money back into that local economy, mm. building that local pipeline of new talent and how you're going to do it. And I think the only way you can do it um, is by kind of sitting and talking to people and being and having really honest conversations mm. about all of this kind of stuff. And just picking up on one of the points that Mark said, it's something that's really recognisable to me because. Five years ago, we all had this big discussion about diversity and how we have to get diversity on screen and what measures we were going to put in to do that and what measures we were going to put in to kind of get that off screen, of which we've got a massive amount of work still to do. Um, and it's the same kind of attitude that we had. It was like, you know, we, we were deemed as a kind of, you know, whenever you wanted to kind of get Bain talent or anybody or Bain producers and whatever, you know, we were deemed to be a risk. You know, we shouldn't, it's that language that Mark mm. is saying, is mm. that we are not risky talent. It is not a risk to put somebody who is BAME on front of a massive BBC One programme. It's just a commitment yeah. that you want to make, to make a cultural, to, to show an audience, but also the actual community that we all come from, to say to them, you can actually do this, and this is the way you do it. It's what Anna has said about putting the money, kind of showing the commitment to people. And to me, that is exactly what we did. You know, I, everybody knows, I, I went on an assistant commissioner's training course. I was a filmmaker for years. Those gates and those doors to commissioning were firmly sh shut for people like me. The only way I got through that door was going on a training scheme and basically saying, you know, listen to my stories and listen to who I am. And I think we've got to kind of have that same kind of... We, we have that same kind of attitude and we have that same kind of desire to culturally shift this perception from London. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, we want the best ideas, we mm. want the best programmes, and we know that those best programmes are going to come from the, you know, not the regions, they're going to come from the rest of the UK. Mm. And we've got to work really hard to get that reflected. And as Anna says, we've got to, you know, commissioners have got to spend time developing, nurturing. It is going to be really hard. Let's be really honest about this. It's mm. going to be really difficult. But if there is a will there from um, the Indies and if there's a will there from broadcasters to do this, mm. I think that there's a commitment there. You, you can actually do it. It's going to take time, mm. but it's, it's a brilliant kind of, you know, standpoint now that we're there to try and do it. I wonder if part of this is also changing the vocabulary, as, as Mark and obviously now you, Fatima, have mentioned in terms of nations and regions and just ultimately the rest of the UK, you know, mm -hmm. and, and maybe just kind the of... The majority of the UK. Exactly. <laughs> uh, maybe it's a sort of a, a labelling uh, issue as well, part of... Uh, that is part of the issue. Um, in terms of some of the, the re returnal brands and how to sort of foster those, uh, Mark, obviously you've, you've had some, some... Like with this, uh, Anna, how would have been sort of the... Um, I guess obstacles in, in sort of really uh, nurturing some of those some of those pieces of IP that's really you know is it the, is it a commissioner issue ultimately? No, I mean for us we're little, so we're just you know we're just getting going. So we've you know we've the, uh, for, for for our company we've just got a brand with Channel Four called Catching a Killer. So that's obviously been a really massive series for us. We've got some other stuff in the pipeline in terms of series development. 
Um, I think the issue is just actually being able to say, right, we're, you know, we've, I've gone from two people in an office to ten people in an office in a year, and I'm about to go to twenty people in an office. So I've grown really, really quickly, and that's great. But you know, within that now, it's about, it's just about having the right conversations quickly enough, actually, mm. for commissioners to realise that. You know, if you want us to stay and work, you have to give us the work. Yeah, yeah and I think and that's, that's the issue, yeah. isn't it? So yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. It's, it's the, it's the then. It's like, well, we've got these ideas, but how do we have the right conversations? You know, because we've all been in that absolute peak and trough where you think, right, well, I'm looking at the balance sheet and I've got two months. You know, and if if we don't get it, we we ain't going to be there. Mm. So it's a it's a real funny sort of chicken and egg situation, mm. isn't it? Which is, the the commissioning editors. And the broadcasters need us, yeah. but we really, really need the work <coughs> to create that sustainability. So it is, it's about sort of how do you almost fast track some of these ideas so that you are, you know, really inputting, I think, into, I think that's a into the, series development. Mm, having the kind of what you were saying about having commissioners based outside of London and having a more organic, you know, conversation. Because with the commissioners, well, particularly with CBBC, who we have developed a kind of brand with... Um, they come to us in Bristol and it's a very kind of you know easy relationship and we are able to kind of talk it through and kind of move things forward whereas when we're pitching things in London you mm. know you have a meeting it goes really well mm. you're kind of sent away by the time we get back up for the next meeting it might be kind of four or five months commission might have left or kind of you know things have changed or something else being commissioned mm. in the meantime and it's not you know it's kind of we're small as well like you so you're mm. kind of it it's it is hard and I think but if people are in sort of more local and you can be having smaller meetings. It's not always about waiting for this big meeting when you've kind of got to the next stage. It's just about having actually a cup of tea and a conversation that things can move and you can kind of, you can build rather than yeah, missing out because the boat's moved on and you're kind of... You're I think that's a really important point because ultimately we all know that making an idea, you know, you have those very rare moments when, you know, an indie will come in and say, yep, yeah, I'm going to take that idea straight away. But to me, the, the bulk of the best work is always done when you have conversations. Yeah. Mm. Not even meetings. You have mm. conversations with people. Mm. That is the best part of my job. Mm. That is the best part of my day when I'm going into Indies or Indies coming to see me and we are sitting there and we are having creative conversations about how we can make this idea bigger, bolder, better, how we can get diversity into it, how we can get a range of opinions into it, all of those brilliant, brilliant conversations that we all love having. To be able to have those in Leeds and Bristol, to have them, you know, very, very quickly, but to keep continuing to yeah. build those conversations are ultimately what mm. I think will be a huge success for us. And again, I keep going on about this. It's a cultural shift. I keep saying it. It's, it's a massive cultural shift that we at Channel 4 really, really want to push. It's, mm. it's like, you know, it's trying to break this habit of just working in a way that all broadcasters work in. You have a meeting, you take an idea and you get it into a routine, yes or no, whatever. We've got to think of different ways about how yeah. we're going to do this. Yeah. Because it's like what I keep saying about diversity. We had to think of different ways to reflect the country that we live in. Yeah. We had to reflect all the stories of my children, of my mum's story, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We had to do it. And we, you had, you know, it had to come from the top and it sank down and it, it, it's still, you know, a massive thing that you've got to do. But we've got to keep having these kind of conversations and being really honest with each other and saying, do you know what, this is not working. If you're not going to give me a returnable brand, mm. we're going to go under. Mm. And if you're really committed mm. to me and if you're really committed to the North, mm. then do that. Mm. Can I show a clip? Because this is a brilliant example of something that... Um, that kind of chimes in on this. This is a, a show that Mark has delivered for us, which was commissioned, obviously, when I wasn't there. Um, it's called Britain's Historic T Towns. It's in um, Series 2. Um, it's doing really good numbers for us at the moment. Yeah. We're really proud of it. Um, it has got such a strong cultural identity and it's got such a strong regional or it, it's around the country. There are so many places that Mark will tell you we visited, but, you know, let's just show the clip. But it, it's something that we are incredibly proud of. So that does a brilliant job for us on a Saturday night. Um, it's, it's pulling in a really loyal audience. It's got big talent on it. It's made really beautifully. You know, we are now going to begin the conversation. And I think this is a key point for me when you get returnable brands, is that how are we going to turn the wheel on that? What's the next step? 
of how we reinvigorate that. And, and to me, that is part of the creative conversation. And that is saying, OK, we're in series two. Do you know what? How can we do things differently? Who's, wh what areas, what different areas can we visit? What different, you know, what's the essence of it? How can we kind of keep moving this on so that every time we're kind of delivering something fresher to our audience? Mm -hmm. And it kind of leads into sort of like what... What can we do in the nations and regions? And obviously, what, what sort of programming can we see at these areas that we can't see anywhere else? I would argue that that is a program which could only really have been created in the nations mm. and regions. In that, I think when you work in the nations and regions, you have a more complex understanding of what it is to be British, mm. um, and our politics and culture, for better or worse, is changing at the moment. Um, and we're at a time when uh, identity. Mm. Uh, it's becoming increasingly important and indeed nationalism and what we've tried to do in that programme is um, look at what makes British cities distinct and unique but use that as a way of telling a much broader and complicated, more complicated story about British identity you know, and we absolutely point the finger in that Bristol episode at the fact that Bristol was based in slavery, many of our ports were based in slavery so, so we're, we're, we're doing something I think, which tries to um, uh, tell a more kind of complex and interesting story about Britain. But I think it's also really significant that when you look at audiences for television programmes in the UK, some of the most popular shows with British audiences are made by nations and regions and indies, but actually make an ac active effort to get out on the road and reflect Britain in all of its diversity. Mm. Think of Country File, mm. think of Question Time, mm. even think of the Antiques Roadshow. Mm. It's by going to bits of the country where you know channels aren't based, where you know increasingly newspapers aren't based, as regional newspapers kind of fade away across the UK and give people in different parts of the country the opportunity to tell their stories, but also engage with their culture, which is often very distinct from the culture of London. Yeah. Anna? Um, so I've got a clip to show you, which I made a few years ago, and I, I, we were asked to show a clip that we don't think could have been made in London, and, and what's the story behind it. So a few years ago, I, made a, uh, I had a commission from Channel 4 Current Affairs to make a film called Forced Marriage Cops, and um, we were following the first year of um, the new forced marriage legislation, and um, we, I was, uh, you know, I was asked to make this film. I went to check out the access at Greater Manchester Police. The access was great. I was really happy. Press officer was brilliant. The, uh, you know, they had these teams called on base violence teams. They were brilliant. I was, you know, just thinking, right, this is great. I lived in Leeds. It was all based in Manchester. That was fine. So we set the whole thing up. And um, nine months in, I didn't have a case. And I, we, you know, we really, it was just, we were really, really struggling. And, you know, I, I as you might know, I've done lots of very difficult things in my life. So I, I was sort of juggling two or three films at a time. So financially, that was okay. So we were able, I was able to sort of sustain myself as a director because I was doing other things. But anyway, I've, I've got this, I'll show you this clip and then I'll, I'll tell you what happened. So that obviously turned into an incredibly controversial scene. But what actually happened was I didn't have a case. And I was um, in Leeds. I've got three kids. I picked my kids up. They were all in the car. And then I got a phone call. And, you know, it was on loudspeaker in the car. And this girl went, hiya, like that. And, and she said, the, the police have just told me I should ring you. And um, I, I said, oh, right. So I nearly crashed into the car in front of me. <laughs> Stop the car. And she said, I'm in the Tesco's car park in Oldham. If you come now, um, I'll give you an interview. So I was like, <laughs> right, OK. So that's a classic example of needing to be, you know, in the north on your <laughs> So an hour later, I screamed over the M62, met her. She, little tiny girl, bobs across the car park, you know, whips off her, her veil, gets into the back of the car and tells us that story. And, uh, you know, she said... She said, you know, I, I, my dad threatened to kill me last night. She was in a refuge. She had to go back to get all her stuff out of the house. She had to go back under police protection. So, you know, we got this incredible scene with her. We filmed with her into the night, through the night. Really sad, heartbreaking scene where she's then putting all her stuff in bin bags and then drives off into the night. The police don't see her again. We don't see her again. Um, and then, obviously, there's a huge duty of care around making sure that she was safe, which I actually did through WhatsApp. 
over a period of about six months. But, you know, it, it was a, a really good example of actually the fact that we were just patient mm. and we waited and we were there and we were all ready to go and, you know, and mm. that's what happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rachel, do you have a, an example as well in terms of... Um, well, I've got a very different... I mean, I've got Gym Stars that was in our first um, show reel, but it's, you know, in a way you could make a series about young gymnasts based anywhere, but I think because we, you know, we've been with Set Up Drummer seven years ago, and actually when we started, the majority of the programmes we were making weren't in Bristol, and we were just determined to do something that kind of, because of partly because of cost, but also because it's where we're based, and, you know, to be able to kind of keep everybody local... We, we um, came up with the idea of doing a series about young gymnasts. And I think what's kind of amazing about this is that actually within the very sort of small radius of Bristol, there's some just some of the world, well, the UK and the world's best gymnasts. And it was just great to be able to kind of make a series that, you know, we've got two of our crew at Cast are hopefully going off to the Olympics in 2020, and we've got world championship acrobats. And, um, yeah, so it's just a kind of slightly more extended clip about that. But I think what was in, what's interesting about doing gym stars is it's, you know, yes, it's about gymnasts, but actually it's so based within kind of the local area. You know, you've got real Bristolians there. You know, you've got kind of Bristolian accents. You've also got kind of everything that kind of happens to young people growing up. So you've got bullying, you've got, you know, bereavement, you've got kind of, you know, people struggling at school. So it's kind of, and it's just being able to just put shine that kind of light on an area and seeing as well within that area how diverse it is as well you know you've got kind of people from all sorts of social class and everything and it's just i think you know it's kind mm -hmm. of it would have been very different if it'd been a london series sure sure I'm, I'm curious as well for the the producers and also the commissioners in terms of how you'll you'll balance this but there's a lot of super indies now uh in the uk who are setting up shop you know obviously regional outposts Endemol's, Fremantle's, um, I think Endemol Shine, it was Endemol Shine North, which has now been rebranded as Worker B. I wonder if part of that is sort of changing that, that message as well and that narrative. But, you know, how do you, how do you compete? And commissioners as well, how do you sort of make sure that you are sort of spreading the wealth and creating a, a little bit of balance in that? Because obviously that is probably very uh, tempting, I suppose, but then obviously there are a lot of, like, drama TV, for example, smaller companies that the argument could be made to know uh, that area inside out and... and are perhaps better candidates for, for that work. Mm. I mean, I think for us, it's like the more people that truly mm. embed themselves in Bristol, mm. Cardiff, Swindon, Plymouth, you know, kind of around us, the better, because it brings talent. You know, everybody's a competitor, and we've got to come up with ideas that kind of, you know, win, whether they're super indies or small indies. So it's, it, I don't kind of worry about it, but, but I think actually it kind of can create more opportunity as long as they genuinely do root themselves in the place that they're setting up mm. and don't just kind of shoehorn in and then whiz off again. Mm -hmm. I think I Rachel's right on that. I think, you know, if you if you're if you're if you've got the bigger indies coming in and if they're committed to kind of working and building that local community, you know, you're you're bringing in new genre specialities, mm -hmm. you're bringing in a new uh, diversity of producer, editor, new ideas, fresh talent, all of that kind of stuff. I think all of those are the qualities that you'd want and something that we'd encourage at Channel 4, the, the indies, the super indies, to kind of do that, is that, you know, for us, it, I don't want it just to kind of be, you know, you've got this big indie there and, and that's it, that's all they're going to do. It's about what else are they bringing to that community mm -hmm. and what else, what kind of specialities and opportunity are they going to bring that can kind of work. And training and development as yeah. well. If they've got more money, yeah. hopefully yeah. more kind of opportunity to yeah. really train up young I, I would say that my... My issue is that I I just think that for the indigenous indies in the area, you know, we want to have the same opportunities. So, mm. for example, in Leeds, the gardens come to Leeds, they're going to relocate um, 24 hours in A&E. Mm. That's brilliant. But I, you know, I don't know whether Channel 4 have said, right, well, we'll guarantee you three series for the next three years, for example, mm. in order to facilitate that building and that infrastructure. Now, the issue, obviously, for, for little indies is, well, you know, we would, we would like that same opportunity mm. to, be, to be guaranteed that kind of, I mean, I, you know, that kind of work. So that's, that's the issue, is that I think that we, we want the same opportunities as a smaller indie. We want, and that's why I'm saying it's so important that we have those conversations. Mm. So it's not, it's not an unfair 
playing field. That I think this really is something important. that I've really wanted to do and want to do is um, I've tried over the last um, few years, whether in commissioning or whether on Panorama, to try and work with smaller indies because um, I'll play a clip, but the, what I like doing is, A, passion projects. I do like where somebody has got something that either they haven't been able to get it commissioned somewhere else or they've been try, trying for ages to get it commissioned, but they're absolutely passionate and they've been working on it for five years or whatever. I, I really like being the person who says, well, I'm going to do that. I do like small indies because... Um, so I worked quite a lot with a company called Antidote in London who were an all-female small indie just, really set, nice. just setting up. Mm. Um, and I worked, I've worked, she's not small anymore, but I've been working quite a lot with Firecrest up in Scotland. Um, again, she's, you know, Nicole's been working really bloody hard for years and years yeah. and years trying to build that company. I do take an interest in people's business in the sense that, you know, talking to them about, you know, the bottom line and, and, and whether they've got, you know, whether they can survive, I think it's really important. So certainly um, when I was in daytime, I was frequently having conversations with people who were pretty stressed out, getting to a point where they didn't know if they had a commission. I wasn't in control of that. I'm hoping to be much more in control of that now and also to be more in control of having a streamlined commissioning process where you are more just reactive, actually. The people that I've worked for have been the best in commissioning are people, um, in my view, like Damien Kavanagh who would just say I'm going to do that I don't like people who get um, who get indies to write pitches over and over and over and over mm -hmm. again you know you either want it or you don't want it so I'm hoping to be pretty quick pretty reactive and also to build relationships with small indies who are quirky local interesting and who were basically making a point of what, what Antidote did was they were bringing me stuff that they knew I would probably want to commission because they knew me so, and I think that building that relationship is is really important. Where they they go, Ashley, I know you're going to like this. You know, um, can I play? Uh, I, might, I wouldn't mind playing the two bits of the panorama if you don't mind, because they're pretty short. They're only a minute each. So the reason I wanted to show that um, it encapsulates lots of things for me. So. Um, the story behind it is that uh, a producer director called Stephen Mizzellis got in touch with me on LinkedIn and said, while I was on Panorama, and said, I've got this, um, I've got this project, I've been trying to get it commissioned, no one will commission it, can I come in and chat to you? And I said, yes. I uh, had a meeting with him and he said, I've got f four Welsh guards, they've all got PTSD, um, they were all in the Falklands. Um, one of them is an ex-Viz cartoonist, and he has done an entire book of cartoons based on his experiences in the Falklands. He's also got, one of the other guys has got loads of Super 8 that's never been seen before. And I just thought, oh my God, that's just so amazing. And uh, I went to Rachel Jupp, who's the editor of Panorama, and said, please. And she said, that's not very panorama. And I said, I know, I know, but you know, you brought me in here to make some different types of films. This is, I want to make this. So she did. And we very quickly commissioned it. And I love it because it's, it's very Welch. I got Keris Matthews to voice it. So it sounds Welch. Um, it's part animated, which was really unusual for panorama. So it represented something that was kind of, um, a bit genre busting. Um, it made people cry, so I really like films that make people feel something. I am very passionate about documentary. Um, and just all in all, it represented something that was, could only really have been, um, a, was a Welch story, but was also an absolutely essential global story about men who go to war and come back with PTSD. Mm -hmm. And, um, and a very humane story, because they, they went out there and we talked about the Argentinians and we talked about, um, you know, we, we talked about war in the film. And, it was very well received, and and um, and Stephen and I are very proud of it. So I think what what it represents for me in terms of commissioning, is commissioning quickly something that you go, that's unusual. I've never, you know, that that's never come across my desk before. I don't know where it's going to go necessarily. I don't know who's going to watch it necessarily, but it definitely should be made, um, and and something that is a really human story. You know, I really like making people... I'm really interested in class as well. I think that people talk about diversity a lot, but they don't talk about class an awful lot. And for me, um, you know, the BBC is, is still a pretty middle-class place, and um, I think that's changing, but I do find a lot of antagonism to the BBC in Hastings, where I live. I know there's quite a lot of disconnect from the BBC in lots of the northeast, a lot of the coastal towns. I think what I'd like to do is try and 
build some goodwill by reaching out and, 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 and making content in those areas which reflects something about people there and their stories, um, as you were saying, um, which is positive and which, you know, tells other stories than, than the kind of two or three or four stories that we hear all the time. Sure, sure. Okay. Um, just because we are slightly running out of time and I want to make sure that we throw it to questions as well, I finally kind of wanted to ask about um, international as well, because obviously that is a huge part of, of any Indies revenue at this point. We need to be telling global-facing stories. Um, I know distributors sort of privately have these concerns over the last couple of years around, you know, perhaps if ultimately the pipeline is a bit too domestic-facing, can we sell it abroad? However, then, you know, the argument could also be made more regional stories. Uh, perhaps it is, you know, uh, there is there is more diversity there. Of course there is. So, Mark, you're nodding your head. I think, yeah, and, and, and actually the clip I've got, if there's time for it, um, specifically makes the point that just because we are uh, regions in these, our ambitions are no smaller uh, than any of the big super in these who are based in London. Um, and, and the clip that I've got, which is going out on Plug Plug, uh, Saturday, uh, sorry, Friday night at nine o'clock on BBC Four, is uh, about Yacht Rock. Um, which is, uh, so it's the show is a kind of critical rehabilitation of a disparaging term for incredibly smooth um, R&B R &B influenced soft rock music, which came out of the West Coast of the USA in the late 60s and early 70s. It's nothing to do with Scotland whatsoever. Um, but we know that that will sell really, really well internationally. But actually it was born out of just a passion for that particular type of music from some of the people that are working within IWC. They might be Scottish, they might be you know, passionate about Scotland, but um, not everything that we do uh, as a nations and regions indie has to be defined by geography. Mm. And, and have you had that conversation as well with Banerjee Wright in terms of the international... Yeah, absolutely. So we've got, we've got a long track record of making um, arts films which are kind of international and outward looking mm. in school. And I think, I think there's a, a sort of danger of perception that we need to overcome, which is the regions indie or nations indie, they'll be very good for making films about that particular patch. Yes, we are, but there's so much more that we can do as well. And so, I mean, I think the challenge for all of the broadcasters going forward, and it will help all of us build our businesses, is don't think of us just as people who can deliver you a nice one-off or a good two-parter. You know, the next generation of big hits should be coming from the nations and regions. The next, who do you think you are? Or the next apprentice. You know, the channel should be looking to nations and reg regions providers mm -hmm. to do big things at nine o'clock that can play in volume because it's only when we have that scale that we can grow our businesses and actually grow the regions that we're working in. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, with shorts, however many awards you win and kind of however great they are received, hey, you know, they just don't sell. Right. And it's, you know, so with international sales, but also I think with there's a lot of companies in Bristol who are really successful overseas, and I think at least with overseas, nobody worries about whether you're from London or Bristol or wherever. You know, they're kind of you're just a UK company. Well, student for natural history, isn't it, mm. in Bristol? And obviously, that's that is very that is very awesome. Mm. Mm. Uh, Fatima, in terms of international and having an eye on international yeah. when you are commissioning uh, from the nations and regions, how how will you sort of? We've got a, a film that? in edit at the moment, which is about um, the tomb of some pharaohs in Sudan. And that's being made by Ali Katz in um, Northern Ireland. Mm. And um, that's got international funding um, already attached to it. They've gone out there because, you know, those kind of shows are really expensive. Travelogue is really expensive for us. Natural history is really expensive for us. And Mark is absolutely right. We shouldn't ever kind of the ambition, of just the fact that it's coming outside of London, shouldn't ever be daunting by that. You know, we want people to go out and get us really big shows. We know big shows are really expensive. And I think for us, we kind of look at it in terms of co-pro funding, mm -hmm. that, you know, we've got co-pro funding attached to this. Um, and, you know, how can we how can we do that? And, and, and I, I just say that Mark's absolutely spot on in terms of what he's saying, is that, you know, you can make big expensive shows out there and there are ways of doing it. Brilliant. Okay. Just checking the time here. Um, very quickly as well, I mean, we, we, we have to talk about SVODs here. 
and with Netflix and Amazon and all of these guys who are here at the festival, you know, they might not be high profile, but they definitely are here. What are they doing ultimately to, uh, to foster production in the nations and regions? Because obviously they are people that you guys are, are increasingly going to get commissions from because they're you know, hiring people from Sky, they're hiring people from the BBC to be in, in London. Um, you know, how, have, you, have you started having discussions with them? Are they, are they moving elsewhere outside of London as well to, to commission? I don't, I mean, we're having discussions with them, but I think, you know, like everybody, we're trying to figure out how do you have the right discussions at the right time, and, you know, you know, it's again, it's about fostering relationships with commissioning editors, isn't it? So, I don't think they're particularly moving around the country, but I don't, I haven't heard particularly... I, I've never heard that, but... There's a tiny office in Bristol with yeah. Netflix office. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that, uh, that's why it's good that Channel 4 are moving all over the UK. That gives Channel 4, as an organisation, a competitive advantage in this kind of incredibly fierce global marketplace that, frankly, Netflix doesn't really have in the as you say it's all about relationships mm -hmm. and you know the danger for Channel 4 or the BBC or anyone else is that when we have our next big exciting idea we take it to Netflix rather than taking it to the BBC or Channel 4 so by being on the ground by being closer to us by having better relationships it means they stand the best chance of getting yeah. the biggest and best ideas before anybody else gets a look at Right. Okay. On that note, um, I will put it to the to the floor here. Do we have any any questions for? Got uh, someone here. Do we have a mic? Or? Just this. I'd like to ask a very controversial question. Um, when Channel Four was created. It was created to introduce a new industrial model into British television, which was short-term contracts. Short-term contracts and out of house. Now, we find that all the big beasts are also behaving like that. Short-term contracts, out of house. In the last 10 years, we've seen first ITV, the big beasts, first ITV and then the BBC, create a new model of in-house production, ITV studios and BBC studios. So what I'd like to ask is, specifically in the context of Channel 4 opening up in the north, what would people think about the possibility of a Channel 4 Studios? Mm. And you'd probably have to make a small change in the law, but I put it to you as a controversial question. <laughs> Way above my pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> Way above my pay grade. I'm so, so sorry that um, I, I've given that really crap answer to that, but um, that's not my area of focus. Um, I totally understand what you're saying, but that, that's something that I, I'm, I'm just not going to go there. But... Um, yeah, I'm just not going to. <laughs> I'm going to be really honest about this. Okay, an in-house production studio. Does anybody else have thoughts for how would that? I mean, I don't, I, I don't, I don't get the impression from Channel Four that that is their intention. I think that you know, for me, the move to put the headquarters in Leeds is such a bold move. It, it is a bold move. Mm. Um, it, Leeds was not the obvious place when when we as Indies were starting to talk about Channel Four coming to Leeds. We thought we had absolutely no chance whatsoever. But our argument was, you know, you need to kickstart the industry up the east coast because, you know, from London up to Leeds, up to Newcastle, up to Edinburgh, you know, what what is there as in terms of production bases? So I think, I mean, my, my understanding is that Channel 4's investment in terms of trying to really kickstart a massive area of growth in the northeast. Um, I don't think it includes setting up a studio. I can absolutely back that 100% and say that is absolutely yeah. the intention. That is our focus. It's not about Channel 4 Studios or, or competing in any other way. It is about re it's about coming to an area and it's about basically working with that local community and creating a new environment and creating a better diversity of opinion and all the stuff that these guys have said. That, it, that is absolutely our focus of what we want to do. I, I absolutely agree, and you know, at, at a time when you know BBC has massive in-house production, as you said, ITV mm. is sort of gathering together a whole lot of companies and sort of reforming in-house production, and Channel Five for big in-house production as well. Yeah. The role of Channel Four in our TV ecology has always been to do the other thing, mm. the opposite thing, and be disruptive um, and the alternative. And actually, by sticking to its founding principles and not becoming a producer it's doing the radical thing by not creating stuff within the organisation itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, so then, different alternative. Um, this is the gentleman over here. Slightly rhetorical question, which is another one you probably dodged, but I'd just like to know how many people from Channel 4 you think are actually going to 
move house to Leeds and how many are going to buy a season ticket from King's Cross because when the move to Manchester happened with BBC, one got the impression that the people who were in Manchester were just commuters from London and that means they don't have that, that, that experience of actually living in the regions. Um, I'm going to defend the BBC because I love the BBC and I spent most of my career at the BBC. Um, my kind of understanding of Salford was that that was the perception that people thought that was going to happen. But actually, that, it, it, it was very, very different on the ground. Um, in terms of the proper workforce, in terms of proper grassroots people, it was a brilliant opportunity for younger people to go up there who might not, one, be able to buy property in London and might want to start their career up there. It was a great kind of experience for them and, and having productions up there. I was, it was really refreshing to kind of see that happen, but also for local communities to come who were inspired by that. I think in terms of you know numbers, again, it's something that I'm not going to dodge it. I, I don't want you to think I'm going to dodge it, but it's not, it's not, you know, the speculation around all of this is something that I don't think we should get that bogged down about. I think what we should get bogged down about is the detail of how this is actually going to work with people up there rather than the numbers. And I think the idea of, of what we have wanted to do is to go to communities there and say, we are here and how can we help you build this production base? For me, one of the most exciting things is when I go to Bristol is, is the fact that from the station you are going to see a massive fall that you are going to aim towards. And as a kid born in Manchester and grew up in Stoke-on-Trent, if I had had that kind of image, yeah. my whole life would have been absolutely different. Mm -hmm. I would have thought that that is an area that I can access now, mm -hmm. and I want people to feel that excitement when they see that Channel 4 logo in Leeds, Glasgow and, Brad um, and Bristol, that this is a place that I can work, mm -hmm. and I can make a change, and I can tell my stories, mm -hmm. and people are seriously going to listen to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Uh, question just here, and then we'll... I guess just building on uh, on what you were saying, really, I'm from Lancashire, but grew up near Bolton, near Salford, and it is great that it's there, but I now live somewhere which, on a clear day, is maybe a 45-minute drive to Salford, but in rush hour twice a day, it takes two hours, and I'm just conscious that we're building a high-speed rail from Birmingham to London, and it is great, it's reaching out into the regions, but what do we do to get beyond those regions, the places where I'm from, where it's, um, it's a boring place that has no access to culture, and you have a lot better access if you're from Hackney than you do if you're just a general, not, not particularly rich, not particularly poor, but it's too far for these kids to go to Manchester to say to go to a dance class. There's no train station to go to Salford. My brother-in-law works in Salford, love to, love to work in the, live in the countryside, but it's too far to go to work. So how do you increase the outside of the actual cities, but those connections to the regions, which really we're talking like 30 miles away, not far away at all, but rather than just um, the city hubs are great and it's great when we can go there, but... Um, yeah, what about that bit, just that little bit further? I think, I think okay. can I speak to that just for a minute? I think the, um, I can talk about commuting because I've been commuting five hours a day for the last um, 10 years into London um, from Hastings. And so I feel actually, I'm going to be based in Birmingham now, but I'm going to be traveling all over the country. And actually, I understand, you know, commuting is, is just one of the things people have to do. And if you have to commute into a city, you know, it quite often takes hours. I think, I think in terms of trying to reach out into all the little bits, it is bloody hard because you, you can't re we can't afford to have, you know, I've actually got 11 hubs, but actually it's incredibly expensive to run hubs absolutely everywhere. And actually I think it's incredibly important for, for me to be commissioning in Leeds, where Channel 4 are also commissioning, for me to be commissioning in Bristol, where, where Channel 4 is commissioning. So you're creating sustainable production hubs, but you can have a hub-and-spoke model. So I think that it's, in, it's critical to be saying to people in Leeds, I want to commission from the bits that are around you, and I want ideas to come from there, 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 and there. Can you bring me things from there, from the people there? That's you know, it's impossible for someone like me to be permanently in every tiny little bit of England, but I think what I can make sure is that the ideas that are coming into me, I'm trying to say they've got to come from, you know, I need stuff from around, from Cornwall, you know, 
I can't get to Cornwall very often, but I need people in Bristol to be bringing me ideas from there, or people in Plymouth to be bringing my ideas from there. So that kind of hub and spoke idea, um, which I think uh, Chris Burns is trying to work to in local radio as well, and think about all of that, you know, is is one way to go. I can answer that from a, a Leeds you know, what's going on in that Leeds mm. hub. So, I mean, over the last year, we've been having numerous conversations with training providers, universities, because that's what's, that's why the Channel 4 move is so bold for Leeds, because there's such a massive area. You know, the patches, Grimsby, Hull, Whitby, up to Middlesbrough, and you, you know, it's a huge area. And all of those training providers are talking about how how this is going to kickstart a massive boom in this industry in this huge area so that you know it and it will take time we all know it'll take time but it might take five or ten years for those those people to come through but as Fatima said you've got a great big channel four sign outside the railway station which is suddenly making it accessible yeah. because the issue for loads and loads and loads and loads of people is they would never have dreamt of being able to yeah. get beyond you know the the sort of the you know maybe local radio kind mm. of area, mm. and actually now it's a real possibility. But it will take time. So you know all the colleges and the universities in that Leeds city patch are talking about how can we better provide? How can we better provide for the industry? What does the industry need? Are we tailor making people that you really need? You know what about all the new digital you know opportunities? So I think that the answer is you know. People are thinking very hard about exactly your question and are very conscious that that's, you know, that it's not just about living in the city. Can I just piggyback off that? Because that's really, really important what you say about the fact that it isn't just big cities. And it really saddens me to hear about the, the whole issue around culture. I think one of the key things that these hubs can't just be are just production bases for producers, directors, production staff, all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we have to do in these hubs is basically cater to communities like yourself, is to cater, and, and I want to get my commissioners and I want to get the head of those hubs to basically think about what's the outreach work that you are going to do other than just handing mm -hmm. out some pamphlets mm -hmm. and all of that kind of stuff and saying to people, why don't you come to a Channel 4 screening? Mm -hmm. What is the way that we can kind of get to those communities mm -hmm. Either we go to them and we create events and event, you know, opportunity there, or within those hubs, once a month, people know that every month there's going to be something there that's going to be a masterclass or there's going to be somebody there that's going to talk to my experience and to my life and to who I am and what I am about. And I think that those hubs have got to have a bigger remit than that because mm. that's legacy and that is what we're trying to do and that is what I really want people to do is to create a legacy in all of those places mm. so that those kids that can't afford to get on those trains mm. are actually able to possibly do that once a month and that will change their lives hopefully mm. 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 We've got a couple, two more questions one from me, I'm one of the talent managers in Glasgow for BBC Studios. I was just wondering, is there confirmation that there will be a commissioner from Channel 4 in each of the regions, so Glasgow included? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Great. Totally. That's good to know. Thanks. Uh, hi, uh, mine's equally quick and I don't know what answer I'll get, but money, budgets, commitment. So everybody's talking about commitment, BBC Channel 4, but how many hours and... Um, how much money and where's your budget coming from, especially obviously with the um, England commissioner? Where's the pot coming from? Can we have any understanding of that? Because obviously commitment well, means mm, money. Yes, it does, and I do have money, but I can't talk about amounts of money at the moment. I do have money, and I will have, uh, I will have to look at the money, look at how it's distributed at the moment, and make certain decisions. But what I have to do is grow a multi-genre slate. So that's all I can tell you is there's going to be money. There, are, you know, I've I've got lots of hours. I've got lots of I've got lots of potential places where I can put content. But um, so there isn't a sh there isn't a shortage of money and slots really. But but I can't be very specific. I'm sorry. I can't be at all specific actually. <laughs> and you know. I'm, Absolutely, I'll be saying this is what I want and this is how much I can pay for it. Yes, and you know it's not going to be huge amounts for the slots. I'm, you know, it just isn't because it's it's England. But I think what I'm hoping to do is do a certain amount of stuff that's, you know, probably reasonably cheap. But you know, if we're clever about it, could be very good. I think a certain amount of short form, a certain amount of local arts and music that could be short form, like the way Scotland are doing the loop and those kinds of things. But also, I'm going to be looking to do um, uplift with. Um, 
uh, with network. So, you know, it's all to play for, really, and it's just a question of me building those relationships and building those partnerships and working out the money. I'm going straight from this meeting into a money meeting. So, you know, I will, I will be much more specific in the next few months. Adam, really, I've got a boring answer on that one. <laughs> <laughs> really boring. I don't know. Um, I, I don't know the details of that. I'm really sorry. I don't. But there is, there is a massive yeah, commitment. Absolutely. Totally. We are all about transparency. Um, no. I don't know the details of that, but there's a very clever Channel 4 press officer in here who will know all the details of that. You will know all about where the money's come from. Brilliant. Okay. Um, oh, I believe, actually, we are... Uh, one one last question. Do does anybody have? Anything? No. All right. I guess we will. I guess we will wrap up. Thank you all very much for being here. Thank you to our fabulous panel.